This well, is the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom show, The Wake Up Call on WCOMLP, Chapel Hill and Carver, 103.5 on your FM dial, or live streaming at WCOMFM.org. You can also watch the show on the People's Channel after a week's delay on Thursday night at 10 p.m., Friday morning at 6 a.m., or Tuesday at noon. The show will also be available on our YouTube channel, Wilf Wake Up Call. I'm Ira Schwinzer here with our host, Lori Hoyt, and Emily O'Hare on the camera. Today, our special guest is Maya Little and Miriam Thompson. Thanks, Ira. So we have a very special guest. Uh, uh, Maya Little has been leading the forces to try to make this university what we hoped it would be and still is trying to work towards. And uh, so we're going to let her talk about that. And Miriam Thompson is one of our Will sisters, and she's here to be part of this program also because she's also been very involved with this. So we're very delighted to have you, Maya, and welcome to our show again. And, uh, and uh, Miriam, I'm going to let you start off. If you've been... I think it would, it would be important for our listeners and viewers to know more about this incredible <laughs> activist what has driven her, um, motivated her passion for justice, what she has been leading on the campus. We started, uh, we were introduced to Maya through the Silent Sam, but she goes far beyond that. Um, so she, I, I thought, Maya, you could really start just opening up the conversation and what, and what your um, recent struggles are, and most important to close on how we can support you. Um, hi, how's it going? Thank you for inviting me on the program. Um, so, uh, I came on the program last year to talk about my activism in regards to the racist Confederate monument at UNC. Um, that monument was removed by uh, brave uh, students and community members, uh, but the struggle around um, justice, racial justice, and more so um, justice for women and LGBTQ people uh, is more so important now than ever at UNC. Um, to give context for that, right now, um, Tim Moore, who is the speaker of NC's uh, house, um, I think is considering a position as a chancellor of the, of the university. Um, Tim Moore is famously known um, at UNC, as, uh, for his tenure at UNC as a student, um, in student government for very homophobic um, and uh, incredibly anti-LGBTQ positions. Um, and the fact that this person um, feels that they can consider themselves uh, for a position uh, as Chancellor of our university tells a lot about the way in which LG LGBTQ students are valued. Um, secondly, uh, right now at UNC, a survey which was taken in 2015 was just recently released. Again, the survey was taken in 2015 by the student body, um, and it was taken due to this university's terrible response to a number of sexual assaults. Um, so, as everyone knows, uh, sexual assault is a huge problem in colleges. It's not only a problem, it, people would say that men and predators are using uh, colleges as hunting grounds for women, and that many young men learn how predatory and very misogynistic viewpoints in college. So it's not just that there are rapists in college, where are they getting these viewpoints from? Where is it affirmed from? Um, and when we look at the situation at UNC, you have a university that inspired the film The Hunting Grounds. Uh, that's how horrific uh, some of the issues around sexual assault were. Uh, the university, uh, a woman who dared speak the name of her sexual assailant, uh, was given an honor court sentence for harassment. Um, I mean, UNC's policies around uh, sexual assault are so bad that, I mean, they had to come into compliance with the federal government through a Title IX violation. Um, so again, this survey was taken in 2015. Four years later, they decided to release it. What does the survey tell us? It tells us about almost one in third, one in three women who graduate from UNC will be sexually assaulted um, before they graduate. Um, it tells us that um, that many men and LGBTQ people are also sexually assaulted, that there is a major problem of sexual violence at UNC, and 
it's not only shocking that the university would take four years to publish that information, which they held on to. Well, I mean, again, students, women were literally coming into the school being raped and then leaving the school before this, this survey was published. That's how horrific that is, that that was withheld from the student body. And we can only guess that, it, that that is to hide the problem rather than to deal with it. So now to take you to the situation with campus police, which was, I think, many people uh, followed when the Silent Sam controversy happened and the way that police uh, pepper sprayed students, beat students. Um, I mean, videos have shown that they were calling students assholes. I'm sorry. Um, very bad words. And um, we're saying slurs against them, in fact. Um, so we have a policing force that has visually um, done the most harm to anti-racist students and students who are, are black or brown and advocating for justice at UNC. We have one in three women who are being raped before they graduate, and police's main focus are student activists. Oh. And I'm going to talk about how that comes into play with an arrest that happened, uh, that I, I was arrested uh, on the 21st, uh, on October 21st. Um, so that day, uh, it was scheduled a, um, well, we got an email the day before, actually, from our chancellor. It said there might be some graphic images um, that might shock students, but there was some kind of, it was a, considered a free speech event. Um, of course, free speech is always protected when it's uh, outsiders who have uh, very misogynistic and racist viewpoints coming to campus. When it comes to students, there's less so. This group comes to campus, they're called the Genocide Awareness Project, um, or also the Center for Bioethical Reform. Um, obviously the name and the title are misnomers and purposely there to trick and misinform. This group is not in any way involved with any science or research uh, or healthcare or access for women. They are an anti-abortion group, they are an anti-healthcare group, and they're a misogynistic group. The way that they go about what they do, um, and again, not being affiliated with the university at all, not being students, uh, like myself and others who not only pay to go to the university but are employed by the university. Um, this group uh, sets up essentially a carnival of anti-abortion and graphic racist and anti-Semitic images. Um, a two-story, like, two story, I guess, carnival of billboards of graphic images uh, supposedly that depict abortions. Um, just to remind people, around the Silent Sam controversy, um, a number of students hung banners um, or set up installations around the monument, set up monuments to James Cates, a black man who was murdered on UNC's campus, and a monument to a woman who was beaten by Julian Carr. These things were removed and we were told that uh, they were illegal installations, that you can't have an installation on campus and, and leave it there, regardless of free speech. So I ask why can a group that's not affiliated with campus, um, which I can argue is mostly comes to campus to intimidate women, um, to intimidate women from getting the, and people who need abortions from getting the proper health care that they need, um, and to arrest um, activists uh, who are advocating for choice um, and for abortion and for women's health care and access. So this group um, sets up on campus. Uh, I guess it, it might be interesting to describe them because they have an MO, and um, for people listening, um, if you are at a university in the South, they might pop up at your campus. Um, and their MO is not about speech. It's about intimidation. Um, the images they show are graphic. Imagine walking onto campus uh, to the library, Wilson Library, um, which is the second biggest library on campus, but also where most classes are held, and seeing images of lynchings. Um, and images of the Holocaust. And hearing people who have no affiliation to the university are going to be gone the next day, don't even give you their real names, telling you that this is comparable to abortion. Um, mm. Which is uh, absolutely incorrect. But not only that, I mean, this isn't a free speech demonstration. It's not about speech for them. It's about intimidation. It's about getting people arrested. Uh, when you see this group, I mean, this group of people, there a lot of them are paid actors. They go through uh, a number of Christian agencies where they're hired to do this thing, essentially, uh, or do it in their service to God um, or whatever they may believe in. Um, they are, again, not affiliated with the university. Many are not affiliated with the state of North Carolina. Um, and they wear whistles around their necks. 
Uh, why would you wear a whistle around your neck if you're about speech? Well, the whistle is to alert police if they feel like you're doing something that doesn't make them feel uh, good or uh, goes against their uh, viewpoints. Uh, at no other point does anyone else on this campus wear a whistle when engaging with anyone else. When I ask my students to engage with each other in discussion through discourse, it's not a game of trying to get one student to arrest or harass another. It's, it's about actually having a discourse. How am I able to have a discourse with someone who is not affiliated with the university, has nothing to do with it at all, won't be here tomorrow, and is purposely trying to get me arrested? Not only that, when you look at the scene of this all happening, you see a lot of students hurrying away from campus because you are literally walking and seeing this graphic image. Um, you see police. Just rows of UNC police on either side of this whole demonstration. And again, uh, you can't tell me this isn't about trying to get uh, activists, I mean women and, and LGBT activists, activists for abortion, activists for healthcare arrested. I mean, again, there is an issue of one in three women are raped on this campus. Why is it that UNC police are always active and about when uh, there are demonstrations of misogyny, homophobia, and racism on campus, but never present when women are being assaulted, uh, when uh, people are being assaulted, when LGBTQ people are being harassed, um, and when black people are made to feel unsafe? Um, and I would say that that's not the function of UNC police. I would say the function of UNC police is to protect people like the Genocide Awareness Project, to protect people like ACBAC and the League of the South, um, and to normalize those viewpoints which are horrific, academically wrong, and um, eventually want to result in the destruction of, I mean, women, and kind of uh, to take back a lot of the liberation and uh, gains that women and other people who give birth have made. Um, that's what the group really stands for. Um, so I guess that's a lot of what happened and that's my viewpoints on it. In terms of my case and, and my um, what's going on, I was charged with misdemeanor larceny. Um, in the words of the charging document, I allegedly uh, willfully and unlawfully stole a piece of paper um, from Tony Parker. <laughs> so, and he's a member of the Genocide Awareness Project, uh -huh. and so I mean to to give some clarity on that. I, it's also interesting to me because uh, I'm not sure where this can come from in many ways. I don't want to talk too much about my charges, um, as I'm advised by my lawyer. But again, it's a strange charge uh, in the course of a, a I guess a, a, a thing being allowed on campus uh, for free speech. I mean. It seems that the university doesn't want us to actually have speech or discourse or discussion. It just wants to make uh, misogynists and, and racists know that they can come to campus whenever they want and do whatever they want. So this just happened how long ago, Maya? Um, so again, this was the 21st, and I had uh, my trial, I had a, just not my trial, but a court first court appearance today. And what happened? Appearance? Can you tell us? Well, I just uh, had my... A few weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. So the incident was a few weeks ago, and then yeah. I had my mm -hmm. court appearance today, which is just um, going in and, um, you know, I mean, part of the thing that's uh, about court and doing this kind of thing and, and giving me charges, which are ridiculous and made up, is to break people yeah. um, and to make them um, less able to handle stuff. I mean... You know, the first thing that I noticed from being tied in court is not the only that I'm tied up in court, is that there are a number of other people who are missing work that day, missing time with their families, missing time that they would use to do something productive and for their community, to be in court. Um, and that's exactly what UNC would rather have me do than to teach, than to finish my degree, than to learn. Yeah, and court is, for, I think most people know from around here, but it's not in town. You have to go to Hillsboro, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So. Let's talk about some of the ways in which we can support you. So you mentioned some really incredible stuff. What can we do to face down the university that you're absolutely right is really now out, especially with the Board of Governors, that is really reactionary, right-wing, appointed by a right-wing legislature, Tim Moore wants to, is ready to be anointed by the legislature to be head of the Board of Governors. How do we address the Board of Governors? How do we address the Chancellor, who has really shown himself to have very little courage? Um, 
how do we really expose the issue of free speech, which is really the issue behind this genocide awareness project you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The police protect them, the role of the police, how they protect the um, agitators as opposed to those who are really standing up for justice like, like yourself. So where can we put our energy to support you? Um, I think uh, there are a lot of ways, and there are a lot of ways for people to get involved. I mean, uh, a direct way to deal with the university, for instance, would be to email Kevin Guskiewicz, who is the chancellor, or call his office. Um, those numbers are available on UNC's website. Or email the chief of police, uh, David Perry. He's UNC's new chief of police. Yeah. He actually uh, mm -hmm. came out of Florida, and he oversaw uh, a scandal in which a football player uh, raped or uh, sexually assaulted a uh, young woman, and uh, the young woman felt intimidated by the police there. Mm. So you can email that person, and I wouldn't, and at this point, it's it's showing not only that you're concerned, but that you're tired of this kind of behavior from mm. UNC um, and its leadership, um, and that, again, they do need to show more courage. The Genocide Awareness Project should not be allowed on campus. Uh, it has no affiliation with the university. Um, it's entirely unacademic, and it's embarrassing for a college campus to host this kind of organization. Um, and to protect them. And to protect them. Uh, UNC police, I mean, uh, in terms of asking around those things, um, I think a lot of students have decided that UNC police are not capable um, or want to uh, protect or keep students safe. Um, I think asking, uh, I mean, asking the chancellor and, and a number of people that you know at UNC why these grievances continue to happen. Why, for instance, UNC hasn't fired uh, the officer who originally went undercover to surveil students in a sit-in. Yeah. Why uh, officers have been allowed to uh, make personal and racial slurs towards students uh, mm -hmm. while arresting them. Um, and that's been recorded on video. Why officers have been allowed to perjure. And why officers, um, are arresting students for um, standing up for women's health care um, and not and doing nothing about the current sexual assault crisis at UNC, mm -hmm. which is no small issue. So when this group was on campus, was there a countervailing group, or was there was there a, a pro-abortion group also uh, present, or? So I want to talk about that too. That's a really interesting question that I didn't get into. And talking also about counter protesting if this group comes yeah. to your area mm -hmm. or another um, anti uh, abortion, um, anti healthcare misogynist group comes to your town, what you can do. The interesting thing is when we first went out, there's a lot of students who said, we should just let them be and they're not going to bother anyone. Um, mm -hmm. Again, most of those students are not students who will ever have an abortion. <laughs> so those things maybe don't matter to them. Um, and the group got people arrested, which they've done at countless campuses throughout the country. So what happens on the second day um, after I was arrested? Students come out and do a counter-protest where they hold up signs um, to make these graphic images less visible. Not only that, but they hand out free emergency contraception. Mm. So the group decides not to stay the third day that they were scheduled. So what does that mean? It means direct action works. It means yeah. that we don't need to sit here and say, oh, this group gets to have their event, we have ours. It means that we're going to use this event to talk about uh, how we're going to make it more possible for women to get access to contraception. Yeah. Um, and I think once it became, they knew that the event would become, then more women would actually have access to that, they left. Their purpose was over. I'm surprised the university would even allow a group like that on. I mean, it's not that they're saying they're for abortion, but that they are healthcare providers or something legitimate. It just seems like they just go around trying to cause trouble wherever they go. No, they're calling there to terrorize and intimidate yeah, I'm women. Saying, and what, one of out of three, let's connect the dots, yeah. one out of three are victims of sexual assault, exactly. which by the way, the Betsy DeVos is trying to eliminate as any kind of serious effort of the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Education federally. She wants to wipe out. So, you know, you see the actors coming together, these, these anti-abortion folks, the, the, the UNC Department police, of the UNC, the Department this of Education. That's what's real really right my point is I'm surprised that the university would give them a permit when they're obviously a group that just tries to instigate things and, pr and promote 
uh, false information. I mean, it's supposed to be a university that is promoting Only truth. if we demand it, because they are also, they're also cohort in, with the Board of Governors. Look and see who the Board of Governors is. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. and see that they're opening up a whole Coke Brothers installation on the campus. They're trying to move away from the traditional, quote, liberal arts college and basically take it over as their fiefdom. I mean, so, so I think in terms of thinking about um, what, I mean, so in terms of getting back to like what you said we can do, things that we can do, yep. I think there's a number of things that we can do in terms of you're looking, um, specifically in my case, um, I mean, the who pressed charges against me were UNC police. I would encourage people to uh, email the chancellor or the chief of police and demand that the charges be dropped. Um, talking about why this group was allowed on campus. What permit was this group given? Who are they affiliated with? Um, I mean, I'm a, yes, I'm a exactly. teacher. I'm a teacher on campus. Um, there's a number of protocols and things and, I mean, uh, degrees that I have to get before I can teach students, exactly. before I can do those kinds of things. It's insulting that a group that is incredibly unscientific and unacademic is um, allowed this kind of uh, platform, in fact. Um, I mean, this isn't about free speech. Free speech uh, is the right for anyone to speak about what they want. Um, that doesn't mean that we give them an entire uh, section of campus, the quad, to say things that are in fact unacademic and don't allow anyone to at all say anything different. Mm -hmm. In fact, make it so that students right. are not allowed to protest or do anything That's different. That's the point, exactly. And shame them, and it, it's an intimidation. It's not about speech, it's about intimidating. Um, if they could defend their position, they could really defend their position, they wouldn't need these lying graphic images. Right. Um, that are just meant to shock and intimidate. Shock and, and frighten. And but um, in accord with that, I mean, I think that talking about direct action, when this group shows up, I mean, uh, I would say that I think it's an amazing thing to pass out emergency contraception. Every time gender suicide awareness project happens, know that women and people who need it will be getting uh, the contraception they need. Mm -hmm. um, that, I think that's a big part. I think that knowing that people will get an edu uh, information about abortions. I think knowing that people will donate to the Carolina Abortion Fund. Um, and to other groups that uh, directly provide access and funding uh, for people um, in need, uh, or need that health care to receive abortions. So, um, but I also think that that is incredibly hard when the police and the institution set up a system in which directly engaging with someone results in your arrest. Directly engaging with someone on their viewpoints and the toxicity of their viewpoints results in their arrest. Um, I mean, this I, uh, who, brought, who brought the charges? Uh, the charges were brought by the UNT Police Department, okay. again. So. Which is David Perry. We'll give numbers at the end and email addresses. Yeah. Which I'm looking now. Um, and I guess the other thing I want to say is if you want to support me, um, there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, for one, I, I do some art. I do prints. Uh, we're hoping to do a print specifically around uh, this uh, incident and event um, and talk about abortion in ways that it's never talked about, um, which I think my partner said was going to talk about, but they got left out. Um, abortion as healthcare, um, abortion right. as um, a process that is needed, uh, abortion as something that can um, also give life um, and renewal for people. Um, and abortion as a miracle, in the same way that birth is a miracle. Um, so I think that's something that um, it's less common than those kinds of images, and it's sad. And as Miriam was saying, um, this is a campus. These are all connected, I think, yeah. and that's why I call them misogynists, not just anti-abortion activists, because it's about misogyny. It's about keeping women and people um, who give birth in in their place, so-called place, um, yeah. and that is by making sure that they, when they go to college, they don't have certain rights, that they don't feel protected, and that they don't have bodily autonomy. So, I mean, it's all connected, as Miriam and said. And I think that that's a good point when we're doing emails with the, the, the police or the university, that we're deeply concerned that students and their rights are protected, not that these outside groups who that's don't right. even have any legitimate scientific backing for what they're saying to come on a college campus and, and get free reign. Uh, goes against the whole purpose of education. You want to have disparate points of view, mm -hmm. but not somebody who's putting up uh, propaganda, not 
not scientific or I mean, I wouldn't legitimate accept this. medical information. <laughs> and we're talking about teaching and being at a university, you wouldn't accept an essay. Uh, yeah. Even if students had to write an essay uh, either in favor or against abortion, you wouldn't <laughs> accept an essay with the kind of information they were presenting because it's in, it's not factual. It's not it's factual. lack of evidence. Yeah. Um, so it's insulting. It's insulting the students who are paying for their degrees. Exactly. Um, exactly. To have that on campus, it's a waste. And 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 it, it denigrates the whole campus. Can you tell me who on campus is supporting? I mean, there's a whole free speech um, uh, revolt on campus at, from faculty and students because this has become a pattern at the university. Yeah. Um, so in violation of its really its, its oath. So who else on? Campo, where else can we bring community and alliance with those on campus that are fighting this and asking? I assume you've gone to campus also to get the uh, drop the charges and to challenge the the way in which the permit was extended. Uh, there's a number of organizations who um, are on campus and I've already been doing this work, and so I don't want to um, come in and say that you know this is something that I started. There are a number of groups who've been doing this work. I mean, since um, you know women and have been on campus, um, and those groups are Campus Y, uh, those groups are uh, NARAL, um, oh, yeah. and NARAL, NARAL. and again I, I want to say the Carolina Abortion Fund, uh, which is something that I know is, is run by a number of um, people, like it's run by people who need abortions for people who also need abortions, yeah. Yeah. Um, and directly um, gives access um, in a state that's becoming, it's increasingly um, harder both legally and financially to receive that kind of health care. I think my question was on campus with whom we can ally. Oh. And, and of course we, we know NARAL um, is protecting abortion and health care. Mm -hmm. We know the Carolina Abortion Fund, but who on campus is really A, supporting this most immediate challenge and who's been traditionally opposing and challenging the whole reduction in free speech. Yeah, I, I think I, so. I said campus the wide, campus -wide yeah. and I think um, I mean I think it's like uh, uh, there's a number of groups. I mean, what I'm most familiar with is the work that campus wide has done. Um, I think that it also comes down to when it comes down to organizations. I think that in this kind of movement, we might not need an organization, but we need something more um, more movement, yeah. more movement oriented. Yeah. And I think that's happened in a number of ways. Again, like the people who decided to come out with um, contraception. And signs that was, uh, that was that was brilliant. That was just kind of a spontaneous kind yeah. of thing in, in response, and I think a lot of people found community in that moment, saying like, you know, we're on the same yeah. side of this. Yeah. Um, but I think that has come together in a lot of different ways around that, those kind of actions. When we look at Swarthmore, uh, is it Swarthmore? That's, a, That's the a name of the call. Yeah, Swarthmore. Uh, I think had a was it Swarthmore or was it Burnmar? Swarthmore had a, a a fraternity that was known for sexual assault. Um, and violence on campus, and they occupied the building um, mm -hmm. of the campus and continued to put out information uh, in regards to this that had been buried um, until the fraternity decided to give up uh, their kind of uh, legal rights on this campus. Okay, we're going to we're going to take a break now, and Maya, I'd like you to change places with Miriam. We're having trouble with the lighting, okay. and I think you'll show up better in that corner. Okay, Maya, yeah, sure. switch places. Was, the light is behind. It's five thirty. Yeah. 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 What? Much more is it is it that. definitely the break right now? Mm -hmm. Well, we we take a break. What you can you have she to, leave? to leave? I have to leave, but can I can I say like just another oh, way to support yeah, me more yeah, personally? Yeah, you can say, I didn't know yeah. you had to leave. I'm no, sorry. no, it's fine. I have to leave, but um, do you want to change places? Please, now? yeah. yeah. If, if you know, a little bit, cause yes, the lighting is better. so bad. The way yeah. we have very poor lighting oh, here, and I'm really sorry. Emily was trying not to have to put it on. It was still poor then. It was getting so dark in here. We're not used to the change in the lighting yet. Okay, here right. go. So, um, so uh, if you want to support me more personally, um, because I, I have legal fees, um, I have to, I mean, skip out on work to go to trial um, to deal with this. Um, for which you don't get paid. Yeah, for which I don't get paid. Um, and, you know, activism is something where, again, like the state and people who don't want you to be doing this are going to continue to come after you. And I always appreciate solidarity and people who... Um, showing me support because that's the only way that we can move forward as a community and not just with uh, figureheads. So um, my Venmo is Maya-Little-1 and I make a lot of... Wait, does it go with four? Maya-Little-1. So M-A-Y-A-L-I-T-T-L-E-1. 
dash l i t t l e dash one dash one. And then, um, <laughs> if you're interested in buying uh, prints, uh, we've made a number of screen prints, uh, bandanas, uh, and zines to kind of uh, summarize a lot of the activities that have happened at UNC, um, and to kind of keep um, those things going in other places. And those are available on Etsy at Cuddle Pot Mag. So that's C-U-D-D-L-E-P-O-T-M-A-G. So go to say it again. C-U-D-D-L-E-P-O-T-M-A-G. Like cuddle, like a like a cuddle. Cuddle. From a pot friend. Like pod and mag. Yeah. Like magazine. Cuddle pot mag, yeah. yeah. At, and um, you got it. Yeah. And uh, again. The website. Yes. And again, um, I think one of the best organizations to support in terms of Directly uh, making uh, that access available is the Carolina Abortion Fund. Um, and they have mm -hmm. a number of fundraisers going on throughout mm -hmm. the year around this need. Um, and uh, the Campus Y at UNC um, is a group that is directly engaging um, and providing that support for contraception and healthcare access uh, for people so at UNC. So we can just call the Campus Y or, we, or is there a contact? Uh, their website gives a lot of ways to give and get involved. Um, as well as, uh, I think, contact them through Facebook and Twitter. Uh, it's students who run that organization, and they're all very responsive uh, yeah. and happy to get involved with everyone in the community. This is an intergenerational Perfect. movement. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Well, I'm so glad wow. you came. Sorry you, you have to leave. Oh, no, thank you but, so much. Uh, but, you know, you've given us a lot to think about, and we, we've been aware of the university. Um, disappointing, to, to put it mildly. Uh, very much over the last few years, and this is just another straw that's breaking the camel's back with what they're doing. Yeah, but the important thing is to mobilize it. And to mobilize it and to, and to, we keep, can't let them. to keep that going and to give you some support right. because it shouldn't all be on your back. Thank you. Uh, the financial mm -hmm. thing, it's. it's uh, um, Maya, what are you teaching as you walk out? Yeah, what are you teaching? <laughs> I'm teaching Native American history. Um, oh. It's a really great class. Um, it's one of my professor, favorite professors teaches it. Um, it's a course that's definitely needed um, at a place like UNC. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll, I'll end on that note, just the thing about my class and why that's important, is um, UNC actually sits on a stolen and sold Cherokee land. Here, here. Uh, that was uh, stolen and sold right before the Trail of Tears and those kind of policies put forth by Andrew Jackson. North Carolina is also uh, the state, is the state east of the Mississippi with the highest population of Native Americans. Um, many people don't know that. Uh, so Native Americans are still alive and present and um, are going to school at a place that is on stolen indigenous land. So it's something to think about and I'm happy to teach about those things. Yeah. Great. Also it gives you a base to what this community, what this university, its history. You know, it's like 1619, how our country was really founded, yeah. and the kind of mythology behind our leaders. And, so and, it's important to know a, this a, land question. So, so are you using that book, The Indigenous People's History of the United States? Um, who's it by? Uh, you know, and I know who it is, and I can't bring, uh, I'll, I'll let you know, I'll, I'll call you. Oh, you gotta email me about it. Yeah, right. I first heard about her on uh, uh, Democracy Now! And uh, Thank you so um, much. Yeah. Um, I gotta head out. Yeah. But thank Go you. Ahead. Yeah, thank Crazy you. Crazy y'all. Thank you. Take care. I'll send you all an email later. Yeah. While you do the break, I'm gonna check the chance for this telephone number. Mm -hmm. This is Will's wake up call on W C O N L P Chapel Hill and Carver, one oh three point five FM. You can stream us live at WCOMFM.org. Well now we're switching gears and as always in the middle of our Show we um, make some announcements of important things that we would like people to know about. Uh, the one big thing for our radio station, which is also a treasure, it's all volunteer run and uh, it's celebrating 15 years in the community. And uh, so they're having a celebration tomorrow night, Thursday night, November 7th, from 5 to 9 at the Hickory Tavern in the Hampton Inn, which is right adjacent to the radio station. In fact, from our parking lot, you can go right on through to their parking lot and to the, uh, uh, the free parking and the uh, uh, parking deck. So join us for a great cause, good food, fun folks, terrific raffle, 
and uh, and just know that this is an important cause along with all the other important ones to keep this radio station going which uh, offers us a home has offered us a home for our uh, uh, the Wilf radio show for uh, 14 years we we started the first the end of the first year of the radio so please keep that in mind and if you can't go tomorrow night you uh, send a, a check you make a contribution to WCOM FM 300 East Main Street and um, we would be very or look very on happy. their Facebook page and you can make a contribution I'm right sure on there's the a way to do it that way page. too yes here it is donate online at WCOM FM.org uh, and you can do it that way. So there we are. So there's something else that's really, really important and dear to our hearts. We have had um, from Club Nova just about every year, we do a show about the great work they're doing for mental health in our community. And they are having a fundraiser. They've been in this old house on uh, East Main Street, diagonally across from Close Meat Market for many years and have totally outgrown it for a long time, plus the house is very old and needs a lot of work. So they're trying to build a, a new building that would be just wonderful. And so that's been going on for a few years and there's going to be a fundraiser Saturday night the 9th, an evening of song and poetry featuring Grammy Award nominated jazz vocalist Nina Freeland and North Carolina Poet Laureate Jackie Shelton Green. And so um, the tickets are expensive because it is a fundraiser. They start at $100 and are available to purchase at clubnova.org. So we would urge you, and again, if you can't go, please go and make a contribution to Club Nova. That would be you would be so glad because this is, you know, so many times we're using jails and the police to handle our mental health problems and they have put such a dent in that for this community mm -hmm. and providing a terrific program. So that is that. I just want to say a good word about Lauren Butler, spoken word poet, who is the one told us about the fundraiser and uh, she does spoken word poetry, so keep her name in mind, and we'll let you know next time we hear about some spoken word poetry. I think that the um, uh, C.J. Seward is back in town, and I think they're getting going again, so when we find out more, we'll let you know. Is there, do you have any announcements? Yeah, I'd like to it? review what some of the stuff we can do for Maya. If that's all oh, right. we're going to do that. Yes. Yeah, besides that, you have any, I just any? want people to get a pen and paper out. Wait, so did, you, wait, did you have? Okay, it's all right. You can't remember. All right. So and I do want um, Iris to repeat where people can hear this show because it's really important. Um, so why don't I give people the name of the chancellor? And you have to have a pen. If you go online and you look up the UNC Chapel Hill Office of the Chancellor, you'll see his face. Yes. But his name is Kevin Guskowitz, G-U-S-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. In addition to emailing, and you can get the email address online, I want to give you the telephone number, because phone jams, people don't always do it online, but jam his phone exactly what Maya's message was, which is part of the whole really downward trend of the university in terms of protecting free speech and the important rights of an academic institution. The number is 919-962-1365. 919-962-1365. Spread the word. Just do a phone jam with friends when they're over, when they're over visiting. We want the charges dropped against Maya Little. It is astounding that the she yeah. was the one that charges were brought against instead of the, those who came to the campus to terrorize and intimidate. And um, we also want to challenge the basis on which the university offered a permit for this kind of um, demonstration that was really designed to intimidate and threaten, especially when 
women throughout the university system, one out of every three are victims of sexual assault. And yet these people who are promoting sexual assault are getting a permit on the university. She also asked us to call the chief of police. If you call that same number, you can ask for the chief of police, David Perry. You want the charges dropped. Yeah, he's the new, isn't dropped. he? He is a mm -hmm. relative. He came on board after the f previous police chief, against whom we had major problems mm -hmm. in the way they were treating the protesters of Silent Sam, if you remember. Yeah, they were remember. arresting the post protesters. He resigns, and we get a I don't know how she described David Perry, but I don't remember. It was very complicated. He was in Florida, and there was some problems with how the police handle things there. Mm -hmm. so Sexual abuse. He still she, knew we can have some hope that he may change his ways, but it's not looking very It helpful. won't happen unless we protest mm -hmm. his office, mm -hmm. that we want the charges dropped. Mm -hmm. He's a new police commissioner, I mean a new police uh, captain at the university, mm -hmm. and we ought to see different behavior than we had before. She was also very high um, on, oh yeah, and also, of course, she gave us Maya-Little-Roman numeral one. That's and where what was it after, after Maya Little? Maya-Little-One, Roman numeral one. Yes. Um, where you can contribute to her mm -hmm. legal defense. This is really you serious. Do you do www first? Is that it? No, it's not. I don't you think just it's do Maya Little Dash. Maya Dash Little Dash. Yeah. It's a Venmo account, which is how you transfer money. So, oh. so you can just go online, Maya Dash Little Dash One. You have to have a Venmo account to use it. Oh, how do we contribute to her directly? What, you would have to have a Venmo account, and then you could put money into her account. And how do you set up that account? Or go to Google. Just Google, would you spell Venmo? V-E-N-M-O. V-E-N-M-O. Well, good thing you told us that. Yeah. I thought this was something more to I have to tell you that we have her number, and if we get up, you know, if people can send it, Lori, I think. We can send it. Just send it to address it to my little and send it to Wilf and we will hand deliver the um, the information. Either do it at Venmo, set up a Venmo account, Maya dash little dash one. Yeah, I, that's why I could think something's missing here. Okay. Because we're gonna make a collection at this I'm hoping this Saturday when Wilf mm -hmm. meets you might yeah. want to talk mm -hmm. about that. People that would can be just good. take out checks and give it yeah. to Wilf and we mm -hmm. can hand deliver it to Maya. But she also is selling prints. And they are gorgeous, which really, just, she mentioned the prints. She is an artist. Not only does she teach, but she's an artist. And she gave us an amazing website, C-U- Cuddle. Cuddle. C-U-D-D-L-E. -D -D that's, that's not a website. You go to Etsy. She said, I thought she said a website. No. You go to Etsy. Etsy is a platform where mm -hmm. lots of people sell stuff. Artists. And then on Etsy, you look for Cuddle Pot. And spell it as E-T-S-Y. E -T -S -Y. E -T -S -Y. Etsy, E-T-S-Y. Yeah. Oh, I boy. thought things were being That's left That's exciting. E-T-S-Y is the platform. And then you go on Cuddle, C Cuddle Pot Mag. Cuddle, P-O-T-M-A-G. So first you go on Etsy, the platform for purchasing these artwork, and then... Iris, thank you. Type it, thank you. <laughs> a cuddle. Because we'd be going -O nowhere. M-A-G. Yeah, and she, Maya was in such a rush that she didn't quite give us those wonderful digital connections. She also talked very highly, and I think we should invite the head of the campus, Y, because they are doing to get on a subsequent show, because they're doing remarkable stuff, particularly around... She mentioned um, abortion and protection and so on. And the other thing she was very high on, and Nera, by the way, mm. has been very supportive of Maya. Tara Romano happens mm. to be a member of Will's mm -hmm. and executive director of Nera. Yeah. And they've been really and We haven't had her on for a long time. That's making up I don't think since she's become director of Nera, we haven't had her on. Tara's in Raleigh, but I think she might come yeah. out. Um, and also, of course, the campus Y. And then she mentioned people to really donate, and you don't need all these little platforms. You can just go to Carolina Abortion Fund and make a contribution. 
and they are providing um, health care and abortion to the most disenfranchised women. And we mentioned about the Wilf meeting this Saturday, and the public is definitely invited, by the way. Mm -hmm. And it's the second Saturday of every month at the Friends Meeting House on Raleigh Road, uh, right around the corner from Playmakers uh, Theater. And um, it's going from 10 to 12. And this Saturday, we're going to have um, a program on the uh, Green New Deal from Kathy Kaufman is going to speak. She was with the EPA. We had her on this show a week or two ago. She is w with the EPA. She was with them for 30 years and just retired um, in 2018 or 2017. I think she was due to retire in 2018, but when uh, Trump got in, within that first year, the EPA was pretty much falling apart and having difficulties. And uh, so she took a year's early retirement, but this is right up her alley with the technical understanding of the Green New Deal and has been giving talks around the triangle. So we're going to have her on the Wilfrid um, uh, monthly meeting this Saturday, and I really look forward to it. So I want to invite anybody who can come, and we're very casual. If you're running a little late, just come on in. And uh, you, if you have to leave a little early, that's okay. We're very easy going. So, okay, Miriam, you're you're. We the, have the some other wonderful guests who's left. Um, we have some other wonderful. We've been to... talking about the campus and and uh, things that have been going awry there and not being handled very well. Um, with the policing to protect these outside people and arrest students but people with guns don't get arrested. Um, well, so there have been some, really, people need to. Um, read today's paper. There's a very balanced report has come out. Um, on what? On, on, the, on the police. It was um, a, a, a report in today's paper. Police where? The, uh, the campus police, oh, it was an independent. Police. I don't know how balanced you can Well, I don't know. Is get, it, but it's, it's not very, it, it's balanced in favor of the, the police. It's, well, it was, it was an independent, I, I used the wrong word, it was an independent report um, uh, from somebody who had been with the FBI, but it was um, very, soft on the police. I think you have to understand, police are that was the representatives, you know, that isn't just, they're not an independent body. They reflect the powers that be. The campus police are reflecting the powers on campus, and the chancellor is just bowing to those powers. And all you have to do is look at how we've distorted and perverted the Board of Governors and the voices they're, they're mm -hmm. speaking to. Mm -hmm. I did want to let people know that Monday, at the Stone Center, yes. you can go on Sonia Ains, S O N Y A or J A. Sorry, I think it's a Y. Y S O N Y A Stone Haynes A J Y N E S Center um, is hosting an all-day event starting mm -hmm. at eight thirty in the morning on sixteen nineteen. The extraordinary um, uh, curriculum that the New York Times yes. first published. And they're going to have scholars and activists all day from uh, 8.30 to 3. It will include breakfast and lunch, but they ask you to register so they have enough food. So if you go online, the Sonia Haynes Stone Center. Oh, I didn't register. Well, you better. <laughs> I changed my dental appointment just so I could go, but I didn't think to register. I'll call them. I think you can call and register. You can yeah. go online and register. You could do it, yeah. And, um, I will be happy in a minute to give you their wonderful um, uh, I've, I've phone got it on my phone. I'm sure I did. Yeah. I just didn't read that I part. think it's for people on the uh, listening to the show that, I'm, that oh, I yes. just give, give it, it to. Um, yes, this is this is free, and it's it's going to be first rate. It's going to be so 8 good. 8.30 to 3 o'clock, or 3.30. The number to call is 919 962 9001. Easy to remember. Um, and uh, I don't have the 
um, email, but you can just call them and register. But it's really it's really Monday, November very 11th. Important. It's on the 11th. That's mm -hmm. Monday. Yeah. So that's going to be um, a wonderful opportunity to really go in depth about that, and also the library is having an ex exhibit that will leave by. Uh, it, it's going to be here until November 18th on 16-19. And downtown, there's an exhibit that's going to be leaving in a few days, I think the 8th, um, uh, of uh, some statues representing the slaves who came over on 16-19. Uh, a, a sculptor, uh, they had a big write-up in the newspaper, and that's at 109, I think, East Franklin Street, right downtown, and some art building and uh, so that's going to be only be here for a few more days so I want to get uptown to see that and to get to the library um, you know if people uh, get on the wolf um, we have a, remind me do we have a, a website does we'll have a webcast a Facebook page we can post some of these important events on our Facebook page if you just go on triangle wolf Facebook and we can post some of these important mm -hmm. events is a major Latin American festival. The last thing I want to say. Yeah, they're on. Oh, and speaking about things, here at the Art Center, uh, the middle of the month, I think the 15th, 16th, and 17th, is going to be the Carborough Film Festival, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. So go on to the Art Center's website and check that out because. Mm -hmm. uh, we've gone the last couple of years and it's been excellent. Wonderful, right, independent film. Just but most wonderful. important, since um, Maya mentioned that she's teaching Latin American studies, you really want to take advantage of some of these important events and we can post them on our Facebook page so people mm -hmm. can find them. Mm -hmm. That number again, by the way, for the Chancellor and the police is 919-962-1365. Um, they can also give you the number for the campus. Why it would be important to support their work and maybe yeah. have them on the show. They've so that always we can been great. Really the why uh, right. Lucy worked there for several years. Lucy's one of our Wolf sisters. It's a progressive outpost on yeah. campus, and it would be wonderful to have them on the show and to really. Uh, I remember it in the seventies during the uh, early seventies for the the anti-war, the Vietnam, the Vietnam War, and. They, they hosted a lot of anti-war stuff, it was great. And again, for the Stone Center, if you want to register, and, or also find out they have, they've been having all kinds of wonderful- I'll get on their mailing list, yeah. Yeah, 919-962-9001. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, okay, so there's all kinds of great things. Uh, and let me just go again, so I don't forget. Because this is tomorrow night, Thursday, November 7th, 5 to 9, right next door to the radio station, Hickory Tavern in the Hampton Inn, 370 East Main Street, Carborough. And it's going to be a fundraiser. They're going to have a great cause, good food, fun folks. It's a very jovial uh, group, and uh, they, they do a terrific raffle, just really wonderful. I've never won, but boy, the prizes are really, really good. And if people cannot go but want to contribute? They can go online to WCOMFM.org. And also for NOVA, if they can't afford the fundraiser? I imagine you could just go to NOVA. They don't have it on the flyer, but I'm sure you could just go to Club NOVA and uh, do that online too, I'm sure. Now this, uh, the flyer doesn't say about going online. Okay. Uh, but it, what it does say, because it, it, it's Mental Health Awareness Week, um, one person wrote, a mental illness is not a crime. What makes us criminal is usually related to how we are treated as less than due to experiencing abusive environments, lacking attention, no recognition of our good deeds and efforts to change for the betterment of self. This was from Jeff, one of their um, uh, people who go there. And Rob said mental illness 
is a disease, but also manageable because there is always hope for the better. So this is from two of the clients. Members. Or members, excuse me, yes, members. Because they are not on a medical model, which is what makes it so powerful. And um, Can I just ask Iris to repeat? Um, the, yeah, now that we have the full, full information, again. you give it. Uh, you can watch the show on the People's Channel after a week's delay on Thursday night at 10 p.m., Friday morning at 6 a.m., or Tuesday at noon. The show will also be available on our YouTube channel, We'll Wake Up Call. And do you want to give those numbers again? She needs them. The ones to give her money, help her out. If you want to support um, Maya, she has a Venmo account, which is Maya-Little-1. Or you can buy her prints on Etsy at Cuddle Pot Mag. Yay. Okay. So there's, there's always lots of things to do and hope for. And uh, we're, we're ready to say goodbye. Uh, we'll be here again next week. And uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>